and welcome to another episode of A Toy Store Near You. My name is Brian Volkweiss, and today's episode is Sarge and Red's Toys and Collectibles in Utica, Michigan, owned by Dee and John Davis. The joy that all the employees have there. It was very hard not to spend five times as much money as, as I wanted to. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you love this episode as much as we did making it. The beauty of winter, an ode to thee. The litter of fallen leaves, the nip of frost, a perfect time to pack up, bundle up, and hit the road for the warm, sunny sands of... Jewel of Michigan. Now we're getting warmer. Come on in. Put on your mittens as we travel to the mitten winter wonderland together with... We're Sarge. And Red. A tenacious redhead who holds the family together. <laughs> and her ambitious former sergeant husband as they drop everything they know in Virginia. West Virginia ain't for me no mo's. Buy a relic from their childhood and invest in the greatest financial risk they never saw coming. We were moving into adoption. All right. Focus. Focus. So buckle in for a high stakes move to the Great Lakes. Ooh, good segue. Into? Together we're Sarge and Red. And we are the owners of Sarge Red's Toys and Collectibles at 45157 Van Dyke Avenue in his store, downtown Utica, Michigan. Q Radio Voice. That's my radio voice. Welcome to Utica, Michigan. Woohoo! That's right, Utica, Michigan, a small city with a big heart located just on the outskirts of the city of Detroit. We're happy you're here. Seems like the perfect place to set up shop. So one of the things we try to do in the store is have a wide variety of items. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it glorious? Street Fighter. Nobody knows about Street Fighter anymore. You win. So we want to have a little bit of something for everybody. Who doesn't think this is cool? Yes, the carpet is amazing. No, it did not come from a bowling alley. If you like Star Wars, we got it. If you like He-Man, we have it. If you like G.I. Joe, we have it. If you like Dragon Ball Z, we have it. If we're going to have stuff for everybody, we're going to have stuff for everybody. Kind of terrifying. Probably the best toy store ever. It's just cool to have that stuff where people can come in here, and the first thing you hear out of their mouth, goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Whoa. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So it's really cool to have all those people come in and watch their faces light up when they see something they had when they were a kid. And they always say, oh, I used to have that. And I always say, you can have it again here at Sergeant Red's. I practiced that. It's pretty good. We get to drive all over the country to get the collections, right? We got Monty in the truck. I think that's what sets us apart from a lot of the other shops in the area. Uh, and this is what I get to listen to the entire way. And we try to get just a vast amount of vintage stuff. Penner's Star Wars pamphlet. My arm is missing. If you guys have followed us on our YouTube channel, you will see like some of the adventures we got. Apparently, we gotta make her a sandwich, guys. Well, while you're doing that, right. this traveling troop of treasure trove trawlers has become well known for their adventures across the states. What are you, Captain America? And online. Oh my gosh, we're toys. From Mickey Mouse. The first bin's already full. To Mickey D's. Do you look worried? <laughs> Good morning, all you beautiful toys. Knowledge, bomb on some people. <laughs> 1985, Battle Cat Bouncer by Wonder. Remember those old bouncy horses we had as kids? Okay. I had like one and then broke it. Yeah. That sounds about right. Imagine being a little kid, getting on this thing with your cosplay shield and sword, sword just bouncing sword. on it. And I know kids enjoy it because our kids actually rode on this. I have a bubble. A lot of people don't even know they existed. We've had folks that come in here like, are you kidding me? Is this real? Check it out, the Battle Cat Bouncer, 1995, whammo. No, 85, wonder. Got it, whammo. All right, guys. Somebody get him some cheat sheets. Cut that out. I'm gonna go grab it. Oh. Ow! Now that Sarge is gone, I feel like I should tell you some secrets. But I wasn't prepared for this opportunity, so I didn't think of any good secrets to share. Take your time. We'll come back to that. Oh my gosh. We're gonna go back nine years now to 2013. Is that nine years ago? Yes. West Virginia, 2013. 
So we were trying to start a family. We've been married several years, doing the thing, nothing was happening. Okay, cut. <laughs> anyway, we had a long road with infertility, fertility treatments. We got to the point where we were moving into adoption. We started the process, found out just how expensive it is, and so we started selling things. They are super rare. We'd take everything we could buy. We were selling old DVDs, Xbox games, anything we could get our hands on. Garden gnomes, boom, ours. We only got caught once. They just called once. the police. <laughs> Some friends of his really wanted to support us. They didn't have a lot of cash, but they gave us this giant bag full of magic cards. We started selling these on an online auction platform. We started making some money. This package here is about 500 and something bucks, 400 bucks. So we realized, hey, you know, maybe we could do this because we still had to pay off all these adoption expenses. But one day he came home with a collection of cards and toys. What are you doing with all this? Well, honey, I remember playing with these like sound effects. No rah rahs took place in this story. <laughs> and so, much like when West Virginia separated from East Virginia, a great idea was born. It tapped into this point in your mind that I didn't remember. I barely... unlock nostalgia. So we started moving away from the magic and moving more towards toys and the nostalgia stuff, and then we decided, hey, guess what? West Virginia ain't for me no more. It's like a Hallmark movie. It is like a Hallmark movie. Uh, we decided we were going to move back to Michigan and open up a toy store. That was so, the plan, to yeah. leave behind your day job. Just live the dream. There's so many serendipitous events that happened and timing of everything. It would be its own show to talk about our whole story. But we also adopted our daughter as well through the foster care system. Yep. John, Talia, where are we at right now? Michigan! Here for about what? Six months we started looking for places. We looked at a yes. bunch of different locations and we found this beautiful building. It's beautiful now. It's but beautiful now. When you saw it the first time. Spooky. John and Dee took a spot in Utica that is literally becoming part of the earth again. It had been set, sitting vacant for many, many years. 30 years this building was vacant. It was also a building that had a lot of history in the city of Utica. It's an old novelty shop. This place was a place I went as a kid. Every one of my buddies that heard that we were trying to buy this was like, I used to go there, I used to buy stink bombs there. Well, John and Dee, either with extreme bravery or with extreme lack of financial planning, decided to take on this project, and it was a project of love. So our offer's been accepted. Um, we have the inspector coming through today. There we go. Some kind of dereliction notice from the government on the window. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can make this knife stick in this wall. The process of watching them take a building, literally falling apart, ah! and turning it into this beautiful store is just incredible. There we go! Now, boys and girls, I don't mess with Ninja Assassin. It started out as like a big pick. The opportunity to go look at what was left. So John brings me here and he's like, Hank, we can open our shop here. Watch the step. I walked in, smelled it. Have you lost your ever-loving mind? Oh my god, are you out of your mind? But the fact that he's a big dreamer and he drags me along and I support him. Yeah, we should be good, right? So he makes it big. He's like, no, it'll be a couple months. We can do it. Oh, I yeah. can do most of the work myself. We bought this place in August. It will be open by Christmas. Say hi, Papa Gray. Hey, guys. How much help did you give us today? Absolutely none. Big man, where did you come from? This is <laughs> Officer Big Mac. Remember, as a kid, climbing up inside of these, but I was too afraid to climb back down, and my mom had to help me get out. Now, I used to think that was, like, kind of an embarrassing story. Well, maybe it is still is an embarrassing story. He reminds me of dipping french fries in a chocolate milkshake. Disgusting. Very so, good. The evil grimace can bounce and bend all day. He used to sit on springs, and you could rock inside of them. Happening. Get him, boys! That's Steve! No, you can't eat me! No pork barbecue today, fat boy! Welcome to John's Obsession. You think your head's in the frame? He wants me to get closer to him because. I am. Did you shower today with I your did. Gamorrean Guard soap? Listen, people always ask, what do I collect? I collect everything Gamorrean Guard. They were like guards at Jabba's Palace, and I remember one falling and getting eaten by the Rancor, and it was very, very sad. But this toy has a very special place in my heart. When I was a kid, I had this very, very Funko Pop. No, you didn't.
I didn't? No. Oh. I had this very nice Sigma Return of the Jedi bisque porcelain figure. No, nope, no. Nope. Okay. Telling a fib again. <sighs> But I remember as a kid, I would play with my Star Wars toys. And I remember my mom had a van. It was a brown conversion van that was like the van. Don't say it. It's a kidnapper van, Mom. Don't say mom, it. if you're watching, you had a kidnapper van and people were afraid of you. So, anyways, I'd climb on the roof of this van and I'd play with my Star Wars figures. And I'd knock the toys off into the Sarlacc pit. And somehow they still survived. And uh, I left all my toys on the roof of the kidnapper van. And she drove down the road. And I remember sitting in the kidnapper van, and I just watched as these were flying off the roof. Thanks, Mom. See what just started? Now, while this might not be, like, the biggest, rarest toy, this is what's special to me. Sentimental. Denise is going to get a Gamorrean Guard tattoo. Whoa, you heard it here first. I didn't even know that was happening. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. My Gamorrean gal. To say we've been embraced by the community is an understatement. Different people that have just come in that have helped us. What John and Dee have done here is really created a destination in the city of Utica. People are coming from all over the city, state, wherever. Today, the Sterling Heights Regional Chamber of Commerce is here at Sergeant Red. It's a brand new vintage toy store. I'm hearing all kinds of stories about what a destination this toy store is. We keep getting pestered, honestly, on Instagram. <laughs> I thought it was Utica, New York. I don't know your guys' name, so you guys came to the store for the first time the other day, right? Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of the reason is because of Sergeant Reds. How fast can you go on that thing? Super fast. We wanted roots. We live here. We put the shop here. His parents live here. This place is just awesome. But the background on this when he first started it, my wife and I smiled and told him, good job, John, you're going to do great. And we cried because... It was just an open building. It was old. Look at it now. Look at you now, old man. Or look at me now. <laughs> everybody come on. They made a toy of me! <laughs> What's your favorite part about the shop? I get to help and play with some toys. Yeah, what's your favorite part of the shop? Pokemon cards. I love the stories. Everyone that walks in here has got a story. I came here and John was shoveling snow. I turned around and left and came back until he was done. <laughs> It's cool to have somewhere you can talk shop about the stuff you enjoy. Sometimes uh, I get put <laughs> in my place. And I'm like, oh no! So we've met so many cool people they doing this, in, and they help. Yeah. They just want to do, do stuff. Kind of Favorite stop of the day, and last one. And how's your back? It's very, very important to us to open arms, invite it is. everybody we like, into we this. We invested in this community. Again, right. it's, it's, this is my hometown. This is where I grew up. So seeing this building that we had, well, I had so many good memories of it. I could have rented somewhere, but we wanted to put down roots and own something. Santa Claus we've had here. We've had the Easter Bunny here. Superhero characters come in for the kids. Celebrities from the wrestling world come. So there's always something exciting going on at the store. We wanted this to be a destination where people can come right. and just, like, visit. Like, hey, I'm going to Utica. Why are you going to Utica? Well, Sergeant Reds, of course. <laughs> All right, guys, so the next toy we have and our top toy countdown is Denise. What should we do? Should, I know. I know. I, I know wonder. Oh, what do we have here? The what mysterious, mystical Wonder Bread He Man. I've never actually found one other than to this one, so it might not be in the store when you guys get here. There's not a lot of details on this thing. So there's a lot of lore. There's a lot of lore and like myths. Insert really smart guy talking about toys here. Wonder Bread He-Man was a mail-away action figure, and he has been shrouded in mystery for many years now. Most fans first learned of this figure when they logged onto the early days of the internet, and they saw this photo of a brown-haired, black-booted He-Man. So they began sleuthing, trying to solve the mystery, and sources brought them to Wonder Bread. Now, Wonder Bread did a Masters of the Universe promotion in the 1980s, but it turns out it was not for a mail-away action figure, but rather a set of trading cards. Even though this figure did not have any ties to Wonder Bread, the name stuck. Wonder Bread He-Man. Even Mattel today is honoring the fans by releasing new versions of this figure with the name One Dog, an obvious homage to the bread company. A growing child for active adult. Other people say this was the Conan. Mattel didn't have the rights for it. And as a result, there's really not a lot of these out there. Just must my hair. He has brown hair versus yellow hair. Black boots versus like the brownish boots and his, I'm not touching it, his loincloth is a different color because the original loincloth is what color, Denise? Red. 
red. No. It's black. It's a yellow, so. And it's a different color brown. Fired. I have a bubble. All right, for our next top toy, we're gonna have to top. But what Red didn't know is that we've already seen My Pet Monster back in season five. Ah! Uh, okay, maybe we were no, not. No, we're not talking about this guy. Get, get out of here. Uh -uh. Get out of here, you. So the next thing I think we should talk about are a toy I really remember playing with when I was a kid. Millions of the muscle thing. Millions of a unique creatures. Muscle, small creatures lurking everywhere. Yes. And they came out in 1983 in Japan. And they were released so they two years out. later in 85 in the U.S. But you had to collect them all. There are hundreds of them. You named them whatever you I thought did. they should be. This was Plier Man, okay? <laughs> Steve the Goon. How many can you capture? Different colors. They did different, different colors, as you can see. So... We don't actually have these in the store individually for sale. If you want to get a Muscle Man, they are in the mix there in this machine, along with a bunch of other 80s and 90s capsule toys. What, co what other toy stores have a secret menu? I don't know. We Ooh, look, see? Menu. Look at this. You think stepping on Lego's bad? Try stepping on this guy. <laughs> and speaking of secrets... So, John's not here. Remember how I said John has a really wide nostalgia streak? Attention shoppers, there's a blue light special here over on your reaction figures. We are literally feeling like two kids playing store and just enjoying it. <laughs> Lunch pail gale. Do we have any gales in the house? Any gales? Hey John. What? If you're really good, I'll give you a pack of garbage field kid cards. That's what I used to get treated with when I was younger, but it was this series that my mom hid above the kitchen cabinets and I found and I took them all anyways. But, Whoa! so here we have the original Garbage Pail Kids fifth series and fourth series. Garbage Pail Kids came out in 1985. But American children these days are obsessed with the whole disgusting deck. The Garbage Pail Kids sticker trading cards were a direct parody of the Cabbage Patch Kids dolls. Those dolls that all of the grown-ups were fighting over at retail stores just a few years earlier. One store official armed himself with a baseball bat. Hold it, hold it. The idea for Garbage Pail Kids started with cartoonist Art Spiegelman and was originally a concept that was intended for his Wacky Packages line of trading cards. Each Garbage Pail Kids card features a child with some sort of disgusting abnormality. And all kinds of peril, suffering. Peril, suffering. With the name of the character being humorous wordplay. <laughs> Licking Leon? Do we have a Leon? <laughs> it was disgusting and gross and it was so awesome. Kids loved these things. They were flying off the store shelves. Monday morning, I don't want to see him in school. Each pack came with five stickers and one stick of bubblegum. This poor kid, I mean, what's going on there? It looks sort of like a swamp monster, but it's from the sewer. Ooh, that one actually looks like you. And there was like just no limits like to what these poor kids would have to suffer through. So with these older ones, the gum sometimes sticks. Wait, why? Well, mine looks like it might have some sort of growth on it. Denise, tell, tell us what it tastes like. It's very crunchy. It's terrible. Oh, well, it was a bad idea. It's terrible. What do we say? It's not just a toy store, it's, it's an, an experience. It's an experience. You may have just captured our death on video. <laughs> the man always goes first. Wanna suck face? No. Hey guys, John here from Sergeant Reds. So we have two paid employees currently. We have uh, Papa Gray, who is my dad. Mom, what are you guys... Are you guys pretending to be us? He works on Saturdays, and typically, if you guys want to get a good deal, he'll type in the uh, Toys R Us price tag on the old toys. Or, or, Dad, he'll give you a $345 item for $45 because he thinks the three is a dollar sign. So actually, we might only have one employee half of this. How much help did you give us today? Absolutely none. Did I catch you combing in my little pony, Shane? Shaniac, as we like to call him. Um, Shane's been working here since he started off just volunteering. It's not always exciting here, but when it is, Shane's here. Troll cleaning. It's oh. almost like a show. It's not a shop. It's it's a show. It is. Basically. We should be on TV. Hey, Brian. Yeah, I know. I know. It wasn't very subtle. I'm not taking a shower with Gamorrean Guard soap on TV. Maybe. When you talk about Sergeant Red, it's become uh, an icon in the Utica area. They're actually celebrities. And we're really, as my wife has said a dozen times, 
proud. Very proud. proud. Like, did you think it would actually happen? Did you think, or did you think like, oh my God, this madman is gonna <laughs> spend all our money and? I didn't. I mean, I trusted you, and I trusted the vision. I couldn't see as beautiful as it turned out. Did I think that we'd be sitting on the most wild, cool carpet? Did I think that it would be as bright and stocked full of Your magic? Like, like later in life, you go through a lot of things. I come here and I find the stuff that I played with as I was, you know, when I was a kid, and uh, it's, it's just an incredible feeling. Sergeant Reds is your place to go for everybody. Bring your kids, bring in your grandparents, bring your emotional support animal. This is the spot that I come to. I love Sergeant Reds. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Can you no, believe we made a toy store? I like, know. If you look at this place and now, do these honestly? Can you believe we've done this? No. Like, I look at this place and like, <laughs> wow. We are Sergeant Red. The name is there for a reason. Literally the construction and the blood and the sweat and the tears that went into <sighs> it, we sacrificed. We sacrificed our time, our money, our energy. But it was all worth it in the end. Yeah. But of course, there wouldn't be in the ends without meaningful beginnings. All this wouldn't happen if it wasn't for you and you. Did you know that? You did smash all the sledgehammer. Do you remember smashing it? Yeah. You know you're adopted. You know you're adopted, right? And you know it's not better or worse. It's just you're a unique story, right? We are growing our family, and it grew into a store. This is Toy Shop Life. This is Sergeant Reds right here. Welcome to Sergeant Reds. <laughs> and with that, we pack up to fly south for the winter. But before we leave Sarge and Red, and company, they have one last piece of advice to share. All right, guys. Okay. Do see it again. See you in the shop. Oh, see you in the shop. You have to do that. The finger. See you in the shop. Wait, we're supposed to be giving them the finger? This one. Are you a proctologist? <laughs> By the way, Red never got that tattoo. But as for the Gamorrean soap... Baby, this dunk is shit. A little privacy, please. Toy Story Near You episode is over. Oh, seriously, guys, go home. There's nothing left for the credits. <laughs>